All right, fight fans, welcome to Caveman Corner, coming from Buffalo, New York. Your host, Jeff. Thanks. Hey, Ray, how's it going? Hey, what's up, man? Not a whole lot. I'm going to kill the music. The music is killed. Yeah. Is it's that? Ro- hey, tell me if it's true or not. It's a rumor going around that you're fighting again. That rumor is true. I will be fighting again February 17th. I have tickets. I have T-shirts. Come get them all. I'm going to buy a ticket off of you, and I want a shirt, too. All right. I got shirts in the car. I got T-shirts in the car. They will <laughs> travel with me wherever I go. So I'm more than happy to help you out. Cool. What size you got? I got small, medium, large. I think I have a couple extra larges left. Wait, 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 wait. Do you got Chinese extra large? I don't have Chinese extra large. I have American extra large because I have American made shirts. So American extra large is like a double X. Make America great again. I did. I did. I did all American, (laughs) all American t-shirts, all American, whatever the printing company was. Wait a minute. So you mean you don't got no sweatshop in your basement full of Chinese workers? I do, but not for my (laughs) t-shirts. That's for my other merchandise. Oh, okay. Damn, I threw you under the bus. You need to throw me under the bus. And my Chinese wife, too. <laughs> so what's going on, Ray? How do you like the new studio? I love it, man. It's the, I want to say, the $200,000 studio, <laughs> $250,000 studio. Yeah, right now we're broadcasting from my uh, daughter's old bedroom. I took out all the stuff, and I made it into broadcast studio, sort of. It's still better than some people, though. You got to, I got to admit that. Some people just do it, and it, uh laptop with their bump beds and laying down in the bump bed talking on a mic yeah we're we're a work in progress chris said he's gonna get the studio back up and running in a couple of weeks but uh i'm not sure you know how money men are they don't always have the money so i'm gonna turn this into my own studio so we can do it anytime come on chris sell drugs do something i know ray knows how to get the drugs so he's like you need a mixer man I, i'll go get you a mixer i was like don't no, ray i'll buy one it's okay so i get one off the bus don't worry about it <laughs> Might fall off a truck or I'll get out of a bus. I'll, I'll get something. <laughs> what do you do? What do you uh, follow around like bands? So you're going to steal it out of there, the band bus? Yeah. <laughs> With Chris address. <laughs> I am I not divulging on the I, air. I need a mixer. Nah, I'm just playing. But uh, listen, man. Caveman Corner is going to be big, man. We still going to get good guests. High class guests, I should say. Big names. UFC fighters. Legends. And, you know, boxers. I want to get Mike Tyson on here. If you get Mike Tyson on, man, we would be big time. Oh, man, I, want, I definitely want to get him. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> I took the protection off my mic, so Ray's laughing. Yeah, I look funny with this big thing in my mouth, right? Yeah, you do. <laughs> it looks a little funny. And uh, you have, like, no lines on your thing, so it's going to be really quiet when we oh, play it. Oh, shit. Wait, head up. How about now? Better. You need to project into that thing, God damn it. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I can see the line right there, too. Yeah. I'm, ta- I'm teaching Ray <laughs> how to use the mics. We're uh, a year into this whole ordeal. We have 50 podcasts, and I s- Ray still don't understand the equipment yet. Yeah, the mics is, you know, it's different now. I got it like a, I'm eating an ice cream cone, and, <laughs> and it's heavy, too. My hands get tired, so I'm going to be switching, <laughs> switching hands. Switch. <laughs> Oh, man. It's going to be a long one. So who do we got today, Ray? I heard you have us a great guest. And you actually advertise on social media. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I like, <laughs> I like advertising. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah, Joe Cortez. Oh, the uh, referee, huh? Referee, man. He's a, he's a great referee in boxing. One of my favorites, him and Mills Lane. and uh, Mills Lane is my favorite. I don't mean to throw Cortez under the bus. but well, uh, We're going to talk about that because they're friends. Yeah, are they? Mills Lane is yeah. awesome. Yeah, and they both got their lines, you know. Yeah. What's this Mill Lane? Um, uh, get it on? Yeah. Or, or that's uh, Big John McCarthy. I'll allow it. Let's get it on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he, was in celeb- on. he was in a celebrity death match. That was the best. Oh, yeah. That shit was cool. And he was in the, and he was in the boxing game, too. Uh, Knockout Kings uh, back in the PS1 days. Yeah. <laughs> <Played just one. laughs> we kind of just threw a guest under the bus. We're totally talking about another ref. Yeah, but Mills but, Lane was but, awesome. But, yeah, he's awesome. And Ortiz, uh, Co- I mean, not Ortiz, Cortez is awesome, too. Ray's uh, getting all his Puerto Ricans mixed up. Yeah. Cortez is awesome, awesome ref. Um, he, uh, I'm firm, but I'm fair. Yep. 
He's a, he's pretty badass. Yeah, and then he was what in that Mayweather, not Mayweather, uh, McGregor yeah, he, sparring. Yeah, he was in uh, McGregor camp. I want to ask him about that a little bit. I heard he doesn't really like MMA too, so it might be a quick show for us. Yes, Charlie Angzone told me about that. So hopefully, he likes it better now that uh, you know he worked with Conor McGregor. So maybe change his eyes a little bit. Yeah, and then we gotta we gotta we gotta brag about you getting the fastest TKO. Yeah, let him know about that. Yeah, you made, you made history. I wonder what he thinks about that. <laughs> he probably thinks kiss, kicking is for sissies. <laughs> yeah, he probably. Do. Nah, I would say he probably think wrestling and and the referee position sucks. He should like the referee's position. That's what he made a living doing. He was also a fighter, man. He had eleven fights. Yeah, ten and one, as a professional fighter. Yeah, that's pretty good. Yeah, you know he he got ring experience, so he mm-hmm. knows he knows what fighters go through. With training and and and, and fighting, you know, being yeah. in the in the ring, you know, or you know, in a cage. I think uh, all referees should have to at least have some, a fight or two. I really Let believe me ask that. this. I, I agree with you. And, and a lot of these fighters in MMA don't got the experience. They just want to take the course. Hey, I want to be part of MMA, and 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 and, and, and I don't want to fight. I don't want to train, but uh, I'll be a ref. Yeah, we got I, a lot of. I I like think that. that's okay for judging. You you can tell analytically what's going on in a fight just by watching it, but. To really understand what what's going on, feeling wise, to be a, a good referee, um, I think you actually need to be in there and, and have fought. I would say that there you can be a pretty decent referee without it, but at the top level, at the MMA, like the pinnacle of MMA, like UFC, Bellator, I think you got you have to have guys that have fought, or at least have done a lot of rounds in the cage. You know, I'm not sure Big John McCarthy's ever fought, but um, he's definitely, you know, put the time in and put the rounds in, and he's been there from the beginning. Right, and uh, he trains too. Yeah, he trains he, he too. Tra- M- uh, Jiu Jitsu, L- uh, MMA. Yeah, and combat courses, yes. and he, he helps to train the police. So he understands. I, 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 you know, he understands what fighters, you know, I guess go through, right? Yeah, he should. Position for sure. wise, and, mm-hmm. and feelings, and getting smashed. And right. It, it, you know, he knows because you know, like we got some ref out there that that, that stopped the fight, and the guy didn't even tap out. It was really not no submission there. Uh, right. Locally, we had uh, Danny Ray. He was a ref for TNT for a lot of fights, and I, I'm pretty sure he's never fought. He's trying <laughs> to go through the course now, like because no, like yeah. he legitimately needed help with some of the positions that uh, jujitsu positions that they were in and stuff. Oh, okay. And while he can be a, a decent amateur referee and look out for fighter safety, because in amateurs, you don't want the fighters to get hurt. It's a little bit different. Right. There's not as much impetus to not stop the fight too late. You know what I mean? You always stop the fight early. And 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 and. It- and the amateur fights, um, I thought he he did pretty good. When when my fight with uh Greg Gannon, a lot of people thought that he should you know stop the fight. That's they surprised that he let it go, you know, let it go. But you know, I I thought you know he did a good a great job, you know. Yeah, I'm sure Greg Gannon was happy it kept going. Well, maybe not, but I mean, obviously you don't want, you never want the fight to be stopped as a fighter, and the referee's job is to protect you from right. yourself. But I think I didn't put. Gannon in trouble. I mean, I knocked him down a couple of times, but I didn't. I didn't put him in trouble where I could have ended it. I think you were too lazy because you put him down. And you're kind of just staring at your hand. You were good. Oh yeah, I did good. Hey Ray, how about you finish the fight now? No, I'm just gonna let him up so I can knock him down again. That was Ray's fight with Greg Gagnon. Yeah. How do you say his name? Gagnon or Gagnon? I don't know. Gagnon, I think. Uh, we should have him on the show. How did it feel to get beat up by Ray? Maybe Vince would come on the show now that we've already fought. Nah, he's so embarrassed. <laughs> <laughs> he's so embarrassed. Did, he, did, he, did you guys talk after the fight? I talked a little bit. I, I think we talked about this story on there before, but that guy uh, was like saying that the guy I fought sucked and he was sitting right there. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. we talked about that story a couple of times. I texted with him after and I said thank you for the fight and everything because I was kind of a dick before the fight but that's part of the game you know I mean before the fight you know you gotta you know you gotta talk everybody gotta talk I'm gonna win I'm gonna knock him out you yeah. know? oh no I mean I was giving the evil eyes at the weigh-ins and when he was eating dinner I stared him down and like I was like wait a minute did you tell Greg Gannon to do that to me no I did not <laughs> did you give him a tip hey no. Greg Gannon you gotta stay your opponent down and you I gotta. I didn't try and get him at the weigh-ins like Gagnon did to you, <laughs> fucking loser. <laughs> There's no place for you to put your hands on someone before. It's a professional event, you know what I mean? Right. You guys are going to fight in a cage. You don't need to get it on early. You might as well get paid for it. Right, right. And, you know, and it's funny, too, because Greg Gannon pissed me off so much, I wanted to take it to the streets. I wanted to call my boys up <laughs> and meet them at the um, 
I remember how mad you were, dude. You were texting me like a madman after that. <laughs> Did you so- see what he tried to do? I was like, not really, Ray. <laughs> <laughs> I was mad. I was right there at the Wayans. I didn't really see as much. I didn't see it like you felt it, but. I was going to call my gangsters. Yeah. He's but, lucky. Yeah. He, he got in there with a gangster. That was a problem. You know, I was too quiet. He thought I was a, I don't know. He probably thought you were a bitch because you are a real quiet guy. <laughs> but you ain't no bitch. Yeah. That's for sure. He yeah. laid it down for him. You coming back anytime soon? If I could get, uh, well, hopefully I can, man. I'm I'm busy. I know that I'm feeling. Busy. I'm busy, but uh, I want to do it. And uh, if I can't do it this year, at least have one more fight. Ne- probably could do it next year, a Thai boxing fight or, or MMA. We should put together a King of the Cave, and uh, <laughs> I'll have you on the show. <laughs> Got Brad Kohler as a promoter. Nah, he should be suspended forever, that fuck stick. We we got to talk to him. He want to talk to us. Yeah, I did a whole other podcast that I didn't put out yet, but I'm going to put it out about what a fuck stick Brad Kohler is for trying to pull one over the eyes of the MMA community. Yeah. You know what? Maybe I shouldn't be as mad at him as I am, but that AJ Hiller guy, he posted on the thing that um, all the MMA media knew that it was fake and they weren't trying to sell it like it was real. That's complete bullshit. And then and if we could get him back, we need to bring Jerry back. Yeah. Because I know be he's going to be a good critic for that one. Dude, Jerry is really good on the mic, too. Yes, Like, he is. really good. He's better than us. We can't let him in here too much or take well, over our show. You know what? Fuck that. We don't need him. Because <laughs> then you might cut me off and he could be a new yes. co-host. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Jerry. Stay in Thailand, please. <laughs> nah, I love Jerry. Jerry's a cool guy. That was a pretty good idea, you know, right? You know, you, <laughs> yeah, it is. <laughs> but you know, Jerry, you know, you know, when that when I first came to Western New York MMA, did the free training. He was the one training me. Did he train <laughs> you good? You know, it was like uh, what, like I forgot how it was, like twenty minutes, thirty minutes. You know, try out. You know, but I joined the gym though. Yeah, he joined the gym. He did a good job. He's a good salesman. He yeah. speaks really well. Yeah, he he, you know he, you know I, I enjoyed the training I did with him, and you know I was like, you know what, I wanna I wanna join the gym. And then I started training at uh, Thai boxing class for Big Corey. Corey Combs. Yep, and he is he he. Oh man, I fell in love with his class, man. I kept coming, and and I loved the gym. I started doing. Big Corey classes, man. Thai boxing class. And, um, Corey Combs or Corey Webster? Corey Combs. Wow. Dude, I love Corey Combs. He's, he's a traditional Thai fighter. Very good. Yeah. You know, I love his class, man. You go to Corey Webster's a little too athletic for me. I can't keep up with him. <laughs> I, I like I like Corey Webster, too. His class yeah. is awesome, man. And uh, He's got that Amir style, that very quick in and out kickboxing style. Right. And that's what I, li- I like about I like Corey Webster. I like I like Tommy. Tommy, uh... How you say his last Neff. name? Neff. Tommy Neff. We had him on the show, too. You don't even know how to say his name? Sorry, Tommy. That's because <laughs> your guy didn't show up. We had to talk to him the whole time. Ross the boss <laughs> stiffed Tommy, us. Tommy got good classes. And, um, you know, Saturdays, I remember when it was nice outside, we do a lot of running. <laughs> I used to hate that shit. But. Mm-hmm. Ray's like, I'm coming 20 minutes late so I can miss the running. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, so, uh, yeah, and then we got uh, um, Mike Dub, Jiu-Jitsu coach. We got Chu and... Um, Matt Flores. Pat Mix, yeah. Pat Mix. I can't believe we got Skinner. Him. Skinner. Skinner. Scott Skinner. Pat Holder. He's a yeah. great guy, man. Yeah, good Pat Holder. Yeah, great. Pat he's been holding for me for this camp again. Yeah, he's real good. He 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 works for everybody. Mm-hmm. Um, who else? Uh, we got the Fit Kitchen guy, Jeremy Ramsey, and his wife Ashley. They do the um, fitness class now. Oh, okay. They're very good. Oh, I haven't, I haven't met them yet. Yeah. I want some food. I, I've been doing my own prepared meals for this camp, and it's been working out really good, and I can make them a lot cheaper than the Fit Kitchen. <laughs> so I might do uh, some Caveman. We should, get, we should get in the business. Caveman yeah. Kitchen. Caveman. <laughs> yeah, Caveman's Kitchen, dude. Cave, yeah. And we'll spell Kitchen with a C to yeah. make it crazy. Yeah. You know what? Me and my fiance, my, my fiance prep meals for me, mm-hmm. and she do a pretty good job. Yeah. My meals are much more tasty. And then we uh we do the uh smoothie diet too. Yeah, I'm not sure about your smoothie diet, dude. Does it make your poop come out all like runny? No, 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 no. No. My poop's solid. Good. Maybe I should try it. Yeah, my yeah. poop's a little runny sometimes. Depends what I eat. Yeah. I had French fries yesterday. It was a little runny today. I, I might have had this out. This is pretty bad. Yes, it is. <laughs> Jesus Christ, we're talking about poop here. I know. 
Mickey Gaskins. Oh, with this being said, I want to give out a really heartfelt I'm um, sorry to Mickey. Uh, Mickey's mom passed away. I'm not sure if it was yesterday or today or when it was, but uh, I okay. believe his real mom passed away today. Yeah. So, so our condolences from Caveman's Corner to Mickey Gaskins today. Yeah, Mickey. Uh, sorry for your loss, and um, you know, hope you recover from this. Yeah. I, you know, Mickey's like a little brother to me, man. I feel bad for him. Mickey is um, the punchline of our show a lot, but uh, we do really care about him. Yeah. Well, at least a little bit. Not a lot, I would say. <laughs> he just pissed me off some of the things he do in the cage. Yeah, he makes me crazy, too. <laughs> I remember with the no hands. Yeah. Hand in his back. What are you doing, Mickey? You're down two rounds. You got to hit the guy. <laughs> <laughs> then Giuliani kid that kept taking him down. He was doing that, too. I was like, oh, my God, what's wrong with you? Yeah. And he dominated the first half of that fight. Oh, FCP's coming up uh, this weekend coming up. Uh, I'm going to talk about my movie. Maybe we can call those fights. Yeah. Caveman's Corner calling the fights. We'll find out. Maybe we should call him if we don't get Cortese. Okay. How's it going? Has he uh, answered your text yet? Oh, boy. Here we go. This is the the always waiting game with Ray. <laughs> I don't know what you're doing there. He's not looking at porn for a change since you don't have a fan dude's a computer in front of you. So, Caveman, yesterday was a, le- uh, a birthday. Somebody's birthday, we know. Who's that? He said, I'm going to give you uh, a clue. Okay. He's a old school UFC fighter, fought in UFC seven. Matter of fact, he fought one of your guys, your favorite fighter, um, Harold Howard. Oh, I know who you're talking about right away. You you gave me too many clues. <laughs> oh damn. That's Mark Hall. Oh, yep, it was his birthday yesterday. So. What about getting my guy on? I thought you were gonna be able to get me Harold Howard. I want to talk to him so bad. I sent him a message on Facebook. I'm going to have Charlie and Zone talk to him for us. Yeah, he'd be a great one because he drove into the casino to try and kill his wife, dude. I, Man, I got so many good questions for him. He might hang up on us right away. I heard uh, Cortez might not answer your text back. Yeah, he's busy. You want to explain to the crowd what happened? <sighs> wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. I don't got to explain nothing yet because we go get him. All right, all right. Ray's not so good with time differences. He forgets that not everybody lives on the East Coast, so... When he sets something up for a certain time, sometimes the guest is a few hours behind us or ahead of us, so <laughs> they're not always ready when we're ready. Hey, I forgot he, I, I forgot he was in Vegas. <laughs> Ray, you're killing us, like always. But we're trying to get the backup plan going. Ray is texting Brad Kohler right now. He just texted me right now. All right, what did he say? Looks like Brad's a little scared to come on, huh? We see. Yeah, not answering the text. Uh-oh, caveman wild up. I know. This what happened when you, you poked the caveman. I know, say? dude. I stuck him off. I stuck up for him instead of Jerry. It made me look bad. I don't like that shit. Jerry was good. I'm never going to replace you. <laughs> oh, damn. Wait, hold up. Come on, Brad. Call the call. <laughs> he wouldn't let us not have a guest today. <laughs> Caveman pissed off now. I know. I just started this whole page for you, so you had a whole page to uh, use to recruit people. Yeah. And you got us a great guest, and you, we messed it up. Yes, I'm sorry, Caveman. It reflects poorly on me. It yeah. makes me look like a bad podcast guy. It do, and it's all on me. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> it's all my fault. Now, Caveman, Caveman got to yell at me. He go write me up at Caveman <laughs> Corner Organization. I know. <laughs> if this is a real job, I, I would get written up. <laughs> if this is a real job, you'd be at the unemployment line. Oh, damn. I got to start paying you so I can fire you. <laughs> <laughs> he going to pay me a quarter and be like, hey, you fire now. <laughs> you worthless bum. I know. <laughs> this show is awful. 20 yeah. minutes and nothing. Yeah, so Brad Kohler with the gender wars thing. Uh, a lot of people are pissed off about that. Yeah, I just spent a whole podcast talking about it because you stiffed me for the last podcast too. But, um, man, I don't know what's <laughs> going on with you lately. <laughs> but, yeah, we we talked about it. Karis really didn't know too much about what was going on. But the whole thing was fake, man. Those fights were fake. It was not in Russia. Tess got two grand, not a million dollars. And 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 you know what? It was funny too because... When we lost, well, well, we, we didn't have the studio, right? Right. <laughs> I downloaded this app to uh, record uh, phone conversations. Uh huh. So I was talking to the the wrestling guy who was fighting. Um, uh, what was his name? He was fighting for fifty thousand dollars. He was fighting the the Gannon. He was fighting. Yeah. And <laughs> it didn't record because uh, something stupid, but uh, he was, you know. 
he, he didn't say nothing about it being fake. Yeah. Or um, I don't know. It's it's just weird, man. I just thought, you know, talking to us, they would have been real about it, you know. But like, listen, we having this show, and it's gonna be predetermined, and you know, like pro- professional wrestling. Yeah, for sure. And not only that, we had them off air for a long time before we did that podcast. Remember? Right. We paused it. We weren't recording. Uh, he knew we weren't recording. He asked us not to record, and we talked about the show. And he's like, "Oh man, that's all this great stuff he's got." And he plugged it like it was a real fight. Yeah, I and mean, then, we probably then, would have went along with him and sold it like it was a real fight if it was fake, if he just would have told us. But right. you can't do that in that. Well, no, we probably wouldn't. I have a little integrity. We would have been like, we would have to word it different. We yeah. would have to word it like pro wrestling did it. Um, uh, sports entertainment. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we would have to do it like that. MMA sports entertainment. We would have done something with him to work it out. Right. I guess he's gotten in trouble, too, for the skits he did about Cyborg and stuff, too. They just did a bunch of skits <laughs> to fill in the time because they only ended up with two matches. Yeah, he told me he got a lot of heat on him in Minnesota. Yeah, good. He should. They should ban him forever from for everywhere in the world. He shouldn't be able to put on another show. And then um, with AJ, uh, what's his name? AJ Hiller. Hiller. You know, I thought he was a respectable guy. He is a respectable guy. He's got his own business just like Brad Kohler is. That's why I believe these fucks. And then uh he said that there was a he kept, he kept I, I seen the post on, on um on Facebook where a lot of guys were going at him. A lot of people was going at him and then he kept bringing up the excuse we said it was a pilot show. Yeah. And then and he said it was all sports entertainment and the MMA media knew Oh, yeah, did he say Jenna Wars Entertainment or something like that? Yeah, and then he erased my fucking comments. <laughs> Damn. Fuck him. Fuck A.J. Hiller. You Fuck sh- Brad Kohler. You know what, though? Since you got the world record, you should sell him your, you should sign your um, fighting shorts and sell it to him. Yeah, I would do that. I would take anybody's <laughs> money. I'm not above selling myself for 10 cents. Don't worry about it. So if you, anyone's got any money-making opportunities, send them my way. <laughs> I want I want uh, Brian Moore to make a, a Legend of the Cage video game. I want to be a secret character. <laughs> Not me, you, baby. I could be a secret character. Fastest liver kick. I have a hundred percent liver kick, and then uh, wait a minute. Else. You know what, Caveman? You got the fastest um, TKO, right? Pro yeah. fighter. Uh huh. You should be a member of uh, Legend of the Cage. I should. You I... know what? I'm going to call Brian Moore right now, and we go get this settled. <laughs> I'm telling that serious. I'm calling them. <laughs> All right. Well, Ray's uh, working the numbers here. I guess we're going to have a guest. Uh, unexpected one. <laughs> Ray's good for this because his phone is full of MMA stars. What if he doesn't answer? Are you going to leave a message? Yes. All right. <laughs> what time is it where he is? Oh, he's in Ohio. Same time. Hey, Brian Moore. How you doing, sir? Hello, Raymond. <laughs> hey, Brian Moore. I got a question for you. <clears throat> Jeff Dance, right? He's a pro fighter. Jeff, he, Jeff Dance, okay, I know who you're talking about. Yep. Yep. He's a pro fighter, and uh, he fought in the old days, back in '96, with no rules, and he got the fastest TKO body shot, world record, the fastest, uh, uh three seconds, four seconds. I think he should be a member of Legend of the Cage. I mean, I have no problem with it, but I have now, you know how it is, I have to put everything through the board. Yeah. I think, I think, I think he'll be happy because he's a miserable, he's a miserable guy. (laughs) Are you recording? Yes, I am. Oh, did you see our our letter we got today? Yes, I did. Now, what was that about? (laughs) Ah, Just, just an image, just an image. An, Im- an image you have no way of knowing people own until it's too late. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> but but it's gone now, so it ain't a biggie. Yeah, that. Um... It, was nice, it, it was it was nice, you know, getting a love letter from them. <laughs> this is the thing with that. Um, you know, you're doing a great thing for fighters, and um, you start you you doing a promotion, and um, you know. The UFC, oh, my God. 
I just hope I just hope all the organizations are as vigilant when it comes to things we're doing to make it better for fighters. You know, I hope they pay attention that much when when we, we start changing the game. So maybe they can learn better ways to treat fighters, I guess. Yeah. And uh yeah, and uh we gotta you know what? Um we got a lot of fighters out here. I w you know, I would like to fight again. <laughs> I gotta get the training with caveman. And I would like to fight for Legend of the Cage promotion. You know? Um I think yeah. it's I think it's gonna be great and um you know, I want all the fans, MMA fans, to check this the website out. Um Legend of the Cage promotion on Facebook on uh, the web page because uh, um, I really believe in what you're doing man I really do well and, and here over the next month or two there's going to be a lot of announcements a lot of things happening um, you know we're, we, we definitely want the fans to stay focused on what we're trying to do and by the end of February, we should be in cement on dates as far as dates and times for our first event. And so, yeah, we're, we're really excited. Yeah, that's cool. And, um, and I see you got into the podcast business. How's that going for you? Uh, pretty good. Uh, we did, we did two last month. Um, we were going to start recording a little early, but Fernando had a fight last night. Um, we're, we're planning on doing four shows this month and we've also, partnered up with a guy named Dustin Hill. Um, we're going to be doing another show called Legends Roundtable. And we're going to have legends come on, uh, do previews and post fights of big events. So, you know, I'm looking forward to that as well. So we'll have two shows out there as of this month. Cool. It's not as easy as you guys make it look, though, I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> it's not it's not that hard we, we do this all the time it's pretty easy for us oh, it's real too. easy when you guys are just posting up interviews and i didn't realize the work behind it there's a lot of editing you would not believe how yes. much editing goes into these and and and, and brian i don't do none of that stuff <laughs> he does none of this stuff came and do it all by himself <laughs> that's why sometimes it takes them a long time to post up put up the the, the, the podcast <laughs> I, I can't complain either. I don't edit shit. <laughs> Rob Mead does all. Rob Mead does all my work. I'm complaining for him. <laughs> the editing is the worst part. On top of the editing, I work a full time job. I teach kids class, and I'm training to fight. Ray Ray messed up our guest. We're supposed to have Mr. Cortez on today, and uh, he didn't do a good job. So he's like, I'm gonna call him and tell him you you belong in the Legends Hall of Fame. <laughs> Well, no. it's crazy. It's crazy because you know, all in one week, it's like we go and watch Bellator. Uh, you know, we got we got to meet all the fighters there at the, at the event. Um, got to meet Scott Coker. He was such a great guy, you know. And then all in the same week, you get attacked by another organization for an image, you know. Um, it's just it to me. It shows the the the, the difference in the two organizations dramatically. It shows the difference. What image didn't they like? You know? uh, Okay, you know when you click on our website and it says coming soon, right? Right. That image. Really? Yep. And it says nowhere on it the name of an organization. It says nowhere on the image that we downloaded the name of an organization. It simply has a cage with eight sides. Oh, because they're, they're saying the octagon is their trademark, right? So you can't use an eight-sided cage? I, I, yeah, I guess, that's, I guess that's the argument. So, so yeah. uh, you can't use the octagon cage. So you know what? It's this video game called Fire Pro Wrestling, and they got <laughs> MMA. Um, they got the MMA cage, but it's not octagon. They they made it like a circle, for the you know yep. UFC don't go after them. <laughs> oh yeah, we and like I said, it's just it's one of those things where you just you can't catch it all. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> I don't have time to sit and go through every image like other people do. <laughs> you yeah. know. That, that's, yeah, yeah. We'll take we'll take it down. We'll make everybody happy. That's all we can do. Yeah, yeah. That sucks, man. So were they actually suing you, or is just a cease and desist? Just a cease and desist. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's no biggie. Yeah, they. What they ought to do is be supporting these guys, helping these legends, helping us build an organization to, you know, 
take away some of the negative images that these organizations have gotten over the years, you know. Um, we're actually offering to step up and help these legends and do things to better their life after fighting. So why we keep getting negative feedback from, I mean, I know why it's, it's, it's all has to do with green things. Um, right. Especially, but, now, especially but, now that they're not, they're a big conglomerate corporation. I mean, you're the last of the, like the real people yeah. that care about the fighters. Well, it's, it's coming. Like there's nothing anybody can do to stop legends of the cage MMA. So, you know, give us to the middle of the year and then people will be, be wanting to work with us instead of against us. Now I was, you know, Hey, Hey, um, I was thinking about ways how we could like, uh, help the fighters and, you know, especially like the older fighters, the legends. And, um, and I was thinking maybe we could do like, uh, 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 autograph t-shirts, maybe sell autograph t-shirts to support them. Maybe we get a lot of fans yeah. to buy them. Well, we've been, we've been working on a line for our, uh, cause like, like I said, for a long time, we've been wanting to get the legends of the cage shirts and stuff going. Um, we've been working with a great guy at Hailstorm graphics named Robert Rundle. He's going to be doing several different versions of legends of the cage shirt here in the next few weeks. And we have, we've been signing with different legends on doing, you know, personalized t-shirts with the legends, have them sign some, be able to sell autograph merchandise on our site, you know, and it's a way to give back to these guys, you know, they're able to sell their gear and guys like Butterbean, you know, can come on our website and sell his razors and, Offer them an open platform, so whatever it is they do or create. Yeah, Butterbean, he's a cool dude. I gotta go to his restaurant and <laughs> try the Butterbean burger. <laughs> yeah, I got a I got a razor he gave me at an event a while back, and I tell you, for for being you would never think a man like Butterbean would be so creative and and create such beautiful stuff. But the man, he does he does a great job. You gotta check him out on Facebook. Oh, we'll have to check that out for sure. Um. I got one question for you. As long as we talk about this a little bit on our podcast, because we had Brad Cole on, but what do you think about gender wars? Did you hear what he had going on with that? Yeah, I I kind of stay out of that whole issue going on over there. Like, like you know, I support the legends. I support the guys, um, but it's hard to. Back at an event, I wouldn't host myself, you know what I mean? That I wouldn't put on myself. And then, I don't know. It's just it's just a touchy situation when it comes to that, you know. I wish them all the best, every one of them. Yeah, us too. We had them on. We, we, I actually sold the show, even though like it was pretty much a freak show. But uh, like when it came out that it was all fake, and, and now they're saying that all the media knew about it, man. I'm, uh, I was a little upset with Brad, so we're gonna, we're trying to get him back on so we can hear his side of the story too. Because every story's got two sides, but um, yeah, yeah. we want to hear what he's got to say about it. Well, and and you know, as an upcoming organization, that's why it's hard to put our name on anything, you know, other than what we the events we put on, is because that's the only way you can control quality or, or or what's being perceived by the fans. You know what I mean? Definitely, and man, you guys do a good job with that. I've never seen anything associated with your organization that is anything but po- straight but up po- front, just straight up positive, man. With the uh, Legend of the Cage, I like I like the st- the stories with the kids, you know, visiting the children's hospital and and you know, and just helping out the legends. You know, they're going through some stuff, yeah. and you know, you got they got the legends got somebody like Brian Moore, and you know, I, I got a lot of respect for Brian Moore. Got a lot of respect I, I can't man. wait to get the documentary going, man. I really can't to to give fans an idea. Of, you know, everybody knows the story of these fighters, but they don't know the story. You know, and to me, it, it would do a lot of current and up and coming fighters good to hear. You know how these guys went from you know the bottom to the top and back to the bottom again, and, and how we're slowly helping them come back up that that mountain to the top. You know, so. I can't wait. I can't wait till everything gets rolling here in 2018 and we're able to really highlight these guys in their career. And and we will have to be careful. I mean, as you see, like there's video we can't use, images we can't use. We're lucky we have the right to use their name, 
you know? <laughs> like, For real. So, it, is, it is what it is, you know? We'll, we'll get it out there to the fans and, and, and let them to decide the, the history and how it's written. Well, I always say about this podcast to Ray, any kind of, anytime we get in the news, it's a good thing. And uh, because your name's out there, even though it's kind of in a negative light, the UFC is like coming after you a little bit. At least you're big enough that the UFC is caring what you're doing. And that says a lot for organization. Yeah. And I mean, I wasn't offended. They have to protect their intellectual property. You know what I mean? Like, because you can believe if they would have put Legends of the Cage out there, I'd have been sending them a letter. You know? <laughs> <laughs> So that's that's how it is. I'm not I'm not offended. You know, is is it just an accident? It's gone now. You know, if they ever have a problem in the future, feel free to email me. Don't waste seven dollars sending a letter. You know, <laughs> I have no pro I have no problem working with anybody. You know, right for sure. Well, I'm sure they got to cover their ass. They're four billion dollar business now. They got to mail that letter, even though it cost them eight bucks. <laughs> oh but yeah, they yeah. got you know they gotta you know they gotta watch out how they treat people. Yep. They, oh, I they, signed that certified letter with a big heart. <laughs> no, because yes, I did. A lot of lot of fans uh, uh, see what they doing, how they treat people, and stuff like that. And everybody going to going to Bellator now, you know, Bellator is yeah. up there. Well, and I have no ill will towards the UFC. You know, I'm watching the prelims right now. You know, <laughs> but but you you look at other things like we were at Bellator last weekend. It was a great show, you know. We, we're running into stars like Nate Diaz and, and all these guys there, and and it, it was fun, you know. But then Chris Cyborg walks in. <clears throat> now this changed my whole perception of what's going on with Bellator because not too long ago, I mean, what last week, Cyborg's talking about how the UFC hasn't created a division for her, how her move to Bellator looks imminent, you know. Right. And then we then we see her front row at Bellator. So the UFC should step their game up. They should start treating people like Chris Cyborg, who have developed that division in, in other organizations and have been a 145er for her entire life. They should give her the opportunity to get a fight at her weight, you know. Or if they don't, organizations like Scott Coker, Bellator, or Legends of the Cage, or or any of us is going to pick up that slack, you know. Yeah, I'm surprised that no organization. Uh, has got some backers behind it that could really give the UFC a run for their money because uh, Scott Coker's doing it now, but there was a big opportunity for a long time when the UFC didn't really, they weren't as big as they are now to for an organization to come up and do it. And Strikeforce tried and they just couldn't do it. But, I mean, all they needed was like one, one big push and the UFC wouldn't be where it is today. Well, I knew we were going to have an uphill battle when it comes to competing with the UFC. I mean, money is always king, you know? But, you know, from the very beginning, I said, if you start an organization, if you treat fighters right, if you do the right thing by the fighters, you will have no problem growing. And we're about to test that theory in 2018. And I agree with you, because if you treat the fighters right, if you, if you go to any web uh, website and comments and see fans talking about how bad the UFC treat their fighters and, and you know talking bad about the UFC, if you go to, you know, they go, if the organization treat the fighter better, the fans see that, they go go with that organization, I believe. Well, the fighters are, well, and the fans are going to follow the fighters, and that's right. that's a bottom line. Well, fans can, fans can go on and complain all day long. Fans can go on and tell the UFC, this needs to change or that needs to change, or any other organization for that matter. And until they back the ones that actually do, you know, until they look at one FC in the way that they've started to up their game and treat fighters and they take a, a good look at, at our business plan and what's going to be happening in 2018. You know, when you support those organizations, the other ones have no, no option but to follow suit. So that's what we're hoping. We're hoping to be able to change the game enough that fighters are saying, Hey, what about us? I like that. I like that too. And you know what, caveman? I think you should fight for Legend of the Cage. <laughs> uh, that'd be awesome. Like, I'll, man, I'll fight wherever. <laughs> I'm, I'm there. Yeah, came in. Yeah, it came in fight. Everywhere. We're, look, we're looking. We're looking at our first event in Fort Wayne, Indiana. Um, so yeah, it's not far from you guys. It'd be awesome to have you out. Yeah, I'll fight. I'll fight anyone, anywhere, anytime, man. You know that. I'm old school. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> All right. But, well, but yeah, we. Like I said, we're we're working hard, man. Things are gonna pick up here in the next month or two. You guys, you guys will be shocked. All right, at where we're going. I'll be down there. I know we just cold called you. We're gonna let you go. 
But uh, thank you for having uh, coming on the show real quick and letting us record with you. Uh, Ray appreciates it, so I don't have to beat him up. <laughs> All right, cool. No problem, man. And uh, like I said, anytime you guys want to talk, I got my vice president and all those guys just ready to hop on and talk legends of the cage MMA. All right, we're oh, going to yeah. set it up a race, so we'll have a real or, uh, real organized uh, podcast ready to go for you guys instead of this craziness. Yeah, we got the new building, so we, uh, we're a little disorganized. <laughs> Okay, yeah, let me know. Maybe we'll do a, a, a co-promoted show or something here coming up for a big UFC or something. Oh, that'd be amazing. Oh, yeah. We'd love to do that. Have you guys have you guys on the round table? Yeah. Yes. Let's do it. Let's do it. So. Ray's pretty big. Right, you better cool. open him up a big spot, at least as big as Butterbeans. <laughs> yeah. Sam, <laughs> <laughs> What do you mean to me, K-Man? Because you're a 205-er that's walking around at like 300. Uh, you know, some... um. <laughs> Quentin Rampage Jackson. I'm looking like him now. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, question: Who are you guys taking tonight, Brunson or Jacare? Brunson. Okay. Brunson. Yeah. Yeah, it's hard, hard, hard for me to deny it. Brunson after uh, he fought one of my friends, Ed Herman. <laughs> oh man, yeah. Brunson's up and coming. These yeah, this... these older guys are. Uh, it's a new breed now nowadays. It's uh, being shown over and over and over again. So, uh, oh, one I, more question before well, I let you guys go. All right, all right, all right. Go Dan, for it. Daniel Cormier Stipe. Oh, this is crazy. <laughs> this fight is so crazy. Stipe's going to murder him. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Yeah, Stipe's wrestling is just too good for Cormier to come in and dominate and hold him down. He can't hold him on the ground. It's impossible. I look for the same thing. Ohio boy to just dominate. Yeah. I'm looking forward to that fight. DC's- and I like D.C. I like DC too. He's a, a good, a good athlete, a good I, character. I think he's the second best two hundred five er that's ever fought in UFC. I honestly do. Now, what? Wait, wait Kamen, what you think about John Jones' situation right now? What about uh, the last? The last I heard about John Jones, he passed his lie detector test. He, you know, I mean, if if the guy didn't do it, he didn't do it. Um, I would love to see Jones back in the UFC. You know what I mean? Like whether you like. John Jones or not, I'm not a huge fan, you know, even though my dog's named Johnny Bones Jones, um, <laughs> because I was a huge fan, you know what I mean? But uh, I don't know. I'd love to see him come back. Yeah, there's so many great fights for, for Bones, especially if he moves up to heavyweight. Yeah, him, you know, oh, yeah. him fight, and Stipe this, would this be fight great. This fight and DC could just be the build-up to Jones coming back. Mega money that that fight would be big yeah steep and uh john jones john jones against any heavyweights big but that'd be a great fight i think the ufc knows dc is gonna get beat when dc gets beat by steep a then they announce john jones is coming back he wants to fight steep a big money fights that's all it is yeah that's a good idea <laughs> i would do that it's it's uh it's a tough fight for dc i'm not sure why he's really taking this fight but um Good but then him. again, every time the UFC builds a hype train, look at Ngano. You know what I mean? Like, so who knows what's going to happen in a fight? Yeah, Stipe. I think Stipe is just too composed. His striking is too good. DC starting to slow down a little bit, in my opinion. I honestly don't think he's the same DC as he was even in the last Jones fight. Mm-hmm. Well, we, you know, with the comments Dana White made about he hits like a Ford Escort at full speed. And- <laughs> A Ford Escort, Ford Escort don't do much when it runs out of gas, does no. it? <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Just sputters and, and clicks on down the road. The only, the only good thing about John Jones is maybe the weight cut is really affecting his performances in the cage. So maybe moving up to heavyweight, maybe we see him have a lot more energy, a lot more gas tank. He moves a little bit better without that horrible weight cut. Um, that's the only thing I can think positive for him to be able to beat Stipe. Well, and Joe, really, Jones and DC both are heavyweight fighters. You know what I mean? Like, these fighters are cutting so much weight to get one weight class down that when we move them up, and, and John Jones is facing Steve A and some of the guys at heavyweight, I think we'll see a lot more competitive fights. We'll see a lot more, you know, when he gets punched by Steve A as opposed to, to getting punched by a Leoto Machida, <laughs> you're going to feel a difference. There's oh, yeah. going to be a difference. You know, when, when I would love to see John Jones fight in Ghana. Yes. Because with the with the reach and everything, but I've seen Jones wobbled by DC punches. So 
I would love to see it. I think John Jones is going to start to get knocked out by some of the heavyweights that are as long as him. He has such a long reach advantage. Nagano would be a great matchup for him on the feet, I think. Yeah. And they kept talking John Jones, Brock Lesnar. John Jones, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> I mean, Jones is good. Don't get me wrong. And that little kick to the shin that he does that he loves so much, very effective when you're fighting a 205-pound guy. But Brock Lesnar is a different kind of beast. And I'm not even the Brock Lesnar fan. Yeah. But when he takes you down, you don't get up. When he takes you down, you get pounded to sleep, and that's what would happen to John Jones versus Buck Rose. I think John Jones has. A I, would, I would hate to see it. <laughs> I would hate to see it, you know, because Vince McMahon would be so happy. <laughs> I, I like to say that John Jones' uh, submission game is very underrated too. I've seen him do some pretty amazing things in the submission world too. So. Oh. Yeah, like, like that standing guillotine against Leoto Machida when he put him to sleep. Yeah, for sure. And he's got some where he, where he switched where he switched up the hands mid mid submission. Oh yeah, and he's got some great rolling stuff. I don't know if you've seen uh, the competition. He did a couple grappling competitions while he suspended last time, and man, he's got some good front headlock anaconda stuff. I'm I'm sure his chokes are like off the chain good. Like Kane, you forgetting another fighter who's coming back? Who's that? Kane Velasquez. <laughs> Kane. Yeah, he's been on the shelf for a long time. It's hard to get excited for him because I always feel like he's going to get hurt again and have to pull out. Yeah, you know. He, well, let me tell you who's Brazilian jiu-jitsu has improved dramatically. And if they fight again, it's going to be another fight. Conor McGregor. Wow. And I'm not a Conor McGregor fan. But his ground game is different than it was DS fight number one. Like... You can only come so far and so long, but Connor's made strides in his ground game. So I'm, I wish he would just put up or shut up, come back and fight, or vacate the title and let these guys go on. You know. Well, his jujitsu brother hit really good. If he's going to fight Khabib and he wants to survive the first round, holy fuck! <laughs> oh yeah. Jesus yeah. Christ, that dude Khabib, is a Russian killer. He would kill. He would kill him, dude. I, I just feel that. Like Connor's got that. What do they call it? That left. A deadly left hand, but what good is that when somebody's on top of you, elbowing you in the face for five rounds? You know what I mean? Like, and, and with what he done in the last fight, he, he just came out and made people look like he was playing a game. Like, yeah. Khabib's gonna suck the life he, out of he's him. He's the next lightweight. I, I feel he takes Tony Ferguson one hundred percent. So, I can't wait for that. I've actually been uh, trying to model some of my top control after Khabib. The way he squeezes those feet together and the knees, he maintains a position. He's the way of the future of uh, ground and pound. Oh, wow. Yeah. Coleman made it, and Khabib perfected it. <laughs> yeah. God damn. Oh, wow. I'll All right. the hammer. We'll, we'll let you get out of here, man. Thank you so much for taking our, our cold call. Ray uh, Ray saved himself. At least we got a little bit out of this show. I'm <laughs> sorry, Brian. No problem. <laughs> All right. Any time, man. All right. Yeah. I, Ray Sirius, I belong in the Legends of the Cage. <laughs> yeah. I'll definitely let him know. All right. You can look it up online. It's the fastest body shot uh, TKO in the pros. Thanks oh, for... I've, I've seen it repeatedly, man. <laughs> impressive. Impressive. Yeah. Impressive to say the least. All right. Thanks, man. We'll now, talk... how, how, shocked, how shocked were you when he went down from that? When he went down from that, I was not shocked because I felt how good of a shot it was. Uh, I actually game plan to hit him with that. The, the way he leans forward and he throws that hook I was, it was I was made I practiced countering that over and over and over and over the whole camp. Um I didn't think I was going to drop him right off the bat obviously, but when I hit him I could feel it just go into his body and I didn't hit any ribs at all, so I knew it was a great clean shot. So I yeah, As soon as I seen that last week that Pico shot. Did you see that? that <laughs> I did see that, yeah. I know I talked about that's that on the last exactly podcast. Exactly what it reminded me of was your was your KO. Yeah, he went down <laughs> the same way. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, but Pico took a oh, long time well. to set it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, hey, anything after the first round is just overtime. Yeah, you know once, what I mean? yeah I, no overtime for me. Four seconds, I'm out of there. <laughs> the the so. fastest money ever made. All right, cool, guys. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Thanks. You guys have a wonderful night. You, you too, too, sir. Bye. 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 Ray, you're lucky. Save the day. Brian Moore. Thank you, Brian Moore. You got you got a whole f- Rolodex in your phone of like MMA superstars. Oh yeah, look at I got Brian Moore, I got Bubba Norton, I got Brad Kohler, <laughs> I got Charlie Anzone, I got uh I ain't gonna say that guy's name. What'd you think about the Chuck thing? Speaking of Charlie Anzone, this is different Charlie Anzone, but Chuck Anzone, 
called out Professor Matt a little bit. We just had Matt on the podcast. That's kind of your boy. Yeah. He actually ranked you. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. I wonder if Matt's seen that. That's crazy. We got to get Chuck on the show. Yeah, we got to get Chuck. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send him a message. Yeah. But he don't like you, K-Man. I know he don't like me because I left him. So he's upset about it. I I, I, <laughs> I sent him a message one time. I was like, hey, I got a podcast show. And, you know, I would like to have you on it, you know, to talk. And then uh, he was like, you got up your show? <laughs> and that caveman show? <laughs> I was like, yeah, there's his show, but I'm, I'm, I'm a producer. <laughs> I, I could bring guests in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I would is. love to have him on, dude. He's super opinionated, but he's really good. He's a legend in there. He made jujitsu happen. But I just think it's funny that uh, he went after Matt like that. But yeah, we got to get him on. We got to get him and Brandon. Yeah, we're gonna have Muckle on. Muckle, so you'll do it soon. Um, we still need to get Professor Hess on. The, there's another black belt over at um, uh, Lake Effect. I don't know his name. I don't I actually oh, don't know. He, he just from. got the black belt. I, yeah, he just received his black belt not too okay. long ago. So we gotta get him on. Um, Professor Hess, Joe Indicato still, and um, who else do we need? Wait a minute. He's a state trooper, right? Yeah, he's a state trooper, so you're going to miss that one. Uh, 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 <laughs> okay, man, I think I'm getting a cold. I yeah. go make it into that one. We got another trooper, and Bill Karn is also a black belt we need to get on. Uh, 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 I'm, uh, I think I'm going to be sick that day, too, okay, man. I'm going to be a sick day. Yeah, and Keith, maybe, because we... Oh, Josh Ketry as well. Yep. Now that we have a, a traveling podcast, we can go to Buma and actually podcast with him. Oh, shit, yeah. I didn't think about that. Yeah, maybe we can just um, sit down with him and, and do one right there at Buma. Plug his school while we're there. It's gonna, it's <laughs> Larry Bach, Backless it's gonna, as well. It's going to be... He's going to have the coolest one, because when we're talking to him, he's going to have his gi on. I know. <laughs> It'll be cool as fuck. <laughs> and I hope he, hopefully he can hook us up with a... One of the good sandwich they got over there in the river works. Yeah, what do they have on there? They like tater tots? Tater tot steak sandwich. It's, it's pretty good. I forgot what they call it, though. Uh, Mike Schultz bought me one. <laughs> that was great. Yeah, we had Schultz on. Um, yeah, I want to finish up with the Black Belt series so we can say we had every Black Belt yeah. in the area on. And then, uh, one, and then I think we should do a White Belt series. <laughs> and if there's too many White Belts to do that. <laughs> what are we going to do when I'm a black belt? Are you going to interview me? Yeah, I interview you. All right. We, we probably have like a special guest, your wife or somebody, and then we're going to interview you. I'm going to I'm gonna think of some crazy answers. <laughs> I got I to write some uh, questions down. I know yeah. you. I know you came in. You're nuts. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be the worst representation of a jiu-jitsu black belt of all time. Well, maybe not. Also, I want to get Dan Swift on this podcast. Oh, okay, that's going to be cool. Yeah, uh, so if you guys are in the comment section, like, also put in there who you want to see, and we'll try and get the guests on the show. Yeah. And we also have the new uh, K-Man's Corner fan page on Facebook. Make sure you like that. Like that, and um, you go on YouTube, watch our videos, like and subscribe, you know? Yeah, or we're on Stitcher, Podbean, yep. uh, iTunes. We should, uh, when we get this, uh, when we're done here, we got to put it on the... Uh, K Man's Corner site. Let's put the post all the stuff, all the links to the stuff. Okay. And I think with that, we're going to get the fuck out of here because I got to go to the coach's dinner soon. Oh, yeah. How come I can't go? You're not a coach. So what? I could be. Come on, I'm hungry. What What do you even do? <laughs> we didn't even get our guest today. Come on. He didn't even write you back yet. It's got to be three o'clock somewhere. No, 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 he did. Did he? Yeah. Joe Cortez? Yeah. What do you say? You see, he, uh, this is the one you advertise, so it looks bad when we do this. And we yeah, he, up. Um, yeah, I got I to gotta call him. I got to call him. All right. You call him. Get your Puerto Rican magic together with the other Puerto Rican guy. and You got something in common, at least. <laughs> All right, fight fans. We coming from the cave in Buffalo, New York. We are out of here. Peace. What a mess. What a mess. Yeah, you messed that one up. Hell yeah. Hell yeah, I messed it up. Uh, what are we going to do with you? I'm going to go to the Chinese buffet and eat like a pig. <laughs> All right, I got to go get Pat Mix a gift. You got to get him a gift? Yeah, I got to get him a gift for the, the dinner thing. Oh, wow. Go to the Dallas store. Yeah, I'm going to go get him 20 gifts from the dollar store. That'd be awesome. Yeah.
food is the best thing you could give somebody. Yeah, well, we're going to go to a restaurant and eat. Well, hopefully I'll see you tomorrow at the uh, um, Golden Gloves. Yeah, I will be there. All I right. think I'll work at 3 o'clock and I'm going to be heading over there. And then I'm going to set up this thing with Cortez again. Yeah, get Cortez, man. What the hell are you doing? It makes us look terrible. Yeah, it does. But I did not. I said I was going to get him. I did not say we were going to have him in this podcast. All right. It's your fault. Well, at least we're back. We got one done. I mean, yeah. This one's going to need a lot of editing again. And, and and thank you, Brian, Boy, you saved my ass there. Yeah. That was a good idea. Good call. All right. Let's get out of here. Well, I do want you to be in... I think I really do deserve... You, I really believe you deserve to be in Legend of the Cage. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Because you've been fighting since 96, back in the old days, and there were no rules. And, uh, you know, you got the world record. TKO. Yeah. Fastest TKO. So you deserve it. Hell yeah. I think so, too. Yeah. And I'm handsome. <laughs> no, you're not. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm jealous of you because you got more hair than me. Yeah. yeah. You're a bald fuck. That's why. <laughs> yeah, I'm hating on you. <laughs> oh, man. Uh.